Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 8th of January 2012. This rather pretty background image is from NASA showing the aurora and some of the quadranted meteors. If you want to see them, you'll have to wait until they return next year, on or about the 4th of January. Although solar activity has been relatively quiet all week, it may be showing some signs of perking up, with four sea flares in just the last 12 hours. But first let's start the year right with our trivia question. This gentleman is Richard Garriott, also known as Lord British. He is a gaming mogul and was one of the first space tourists. In 1993 he bought two items at Sotheby's auction for nearly $70,000, which you'll likely never have in his possession. One of them is associated with today's date. What were they? The answer will be given at the end. Let's take a look at the week in review. The sun has been remarkably quiet for the last week. We've had just 14 sea flares since the start of the year, which is the lowest level of flaring that we've had since July. And as you can see, at least three of them were long duration events, and so were likely associated with coronal mass ejections. First we'll start with a movie of the sunspot evolution over the last week, using the 4700 Angstrom channel of the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. The thing to look for here is the emergence about halfway through the video of region 1393, which appears in the northern hemisphere near disk center. Next we look at the transition region for eruptive events. This movie is made in the Helium-2 304 Angstrom line, which corresponds to the transition region of the solar atmosphere at about 50,000 degrees Kelvin. You can see one of the eruptions near the end of the movie, near disk center. I'll show you an enhanced version of that in a minute. The Iron 9 channel at 171 angstroms is particularly good for looking at interaction between active regions. But as you can see there are relatively few regions so the opportunity for such interactions is very limited. There are some though. Do you see them? Although the flares have been sparse we've had quite some spectacular chrono mass ejections as you can see here from the Soho Lasco movie covering the last seven days. Despite there being so many CMEs, there has been very little geomagnetic activity. This seems to be because many of these events have been on the far side of the Sun. Now here is that special event that I mentioned earlier. It is a filament eruption seemingly caused by the emergent reactive region 1392 and 1393, which destabilized a pre-existing filament causing it to spew plasma into interplanetary space. Now let's take a more detailed look at what's been going on over the last 24 hours. We've had a string of small sea flares, mainly from region 1393. Currently we have seven numbered regions on the disk. Region 1390 has just rotated over the west limb, but the high loops from that region are still visible. However, we have one as yet unnumbered region coming over the east limb. It seems to have at least one large spot associated with it. Regions 1388 and 1389 are near the southwest limb and have produced one sea flare each in the last 48 hours. However, they will disappear over the west limb in the next couple of days and won't affect our space weather much in the near future. Regions 1391 and 1394 are in the northeast. They are relatively small regions and have produced no significant activity as yet. The most interesting regions are regions 1392 and 1393, which have both developed rapidly in the northwest quadrant. They have produced the lion's share of the flares that we've been seeing. So they are worth keeping an eye on for larger events for the next few days, at least until they rotate over the west limb. Here's a 24 hour sequence of the flares in region 1393, in helium 2, iron 9 and then in iron 20.
Lastly, we'll have a look at a very nice chronal mass ejection off the southeast limb. But alas, once again, it was on the back side of the sun. So we have no idea what actually caused it. So what do we have coming over the next few days? For that we must turn to the composite coronal image from the Stereo and Solar Dynamics Observatory. We can see there are no major regions due back over the east limb for at least five to seven days. Meanwhile we will lose regions 1388, 1389, 92 and 93. So unless we get some new growth the sun should be getting quieter over the next few days. Now for the answer to our trivia question. What did Richard Garriott buy at auction for $70,000? The answer is Luna 21 and Luna Hod 2. These are the two Russian lunar rovers that are both currently on the surface of the moon. If you want to find out more about what is happening on the sun, go to the links in the description box below. <coughs> if you like this video or would like to see more editions of the sun today, please go to my channel. Uh, all my old editions are listed there. If you'd like to keep track of what's happening on the sun on a daily basis, you are welcome to subscribe. I have a couple pieces of good news to impart to you. Over the holidays I got a new microphone system for my computer and hopefully the sound quality will be better than it has been before. And a second piece of good news is that the first in my series of papers for the American Meteorological Society on Space Weather has been accepted for publication. And paper two is nearly ready to be submitted. So thank you for your patience uh, in, in letting me get on with that particular piece of work. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.